This is the grooming slash driving collar. I like to use it in place of a halter. So if you're out driving, something happens, you need to clip a lead rope on because you don't want to be leading them around by their bit, then you have this on them. The mini, so we just put that on. You don't want it too tight because you want them to be able to bend the neck at the pole, I mean. So you just want it snug. So that's pretty good. This is the super flex collar. Um, you can see how soft it is, how pliable it is. I would still consider this a collar for a straight line of draft because even with the adjustable here, if you're pulling from down here, it's pulling on my hand. So if you're pulling, if the front of your car, your single tree is low and they're pulling, it's pulling from the top of their neck um, when you want it to pull from the chest. If you're on the straight line of draft, when they pull, it's going to pull from the chest and you won't get that bending back here from the, sometimes these will bend, um, but you won't get that if you have a straight line of draft. So that's just my opinion. Um, I really like this collar so far. I love how soft it is. I love it, how adjustable it is. Um, this is the bigger one. I think it said 12 to 13 inches. It does fit him on the biggest holes. But anyway, um, we'll put this on. Then you run it through up through here and then buckle it. So we'll buckle it tight so you can see what that looks like when it doesn't, when it's not quite right. Buckle it the same on both sides. Do not have it different on one side than the other. You'll cause rubbing and soaring. Okay, this is the second to the last hole. So as you can see, it sits up high. Um, it should sit back a little further and it doesn't, it's very snug and very tight here it's not really clearing here the way I'd like it to so I'll put it down where I like it I can't even make it tighter than this it won't unless I put it up by his ears I suppose good boy okay now you can see how it settles back onto his shoulders here oh it's so nice and it's still missing the point of shoulder and it's below the windpipe. He could put his head down and pull. Um, he put his head down, it gives a little space. If he's pulling a straight line of draft, it's gonna pull right up in that chest and those shoulders and not put weight on that neck strap. That has no weight on it right now. And I'm pulling, pulling. Of course, not as much as the cartwheel, but you can see how that settles back real nice on him. That's what you want. That's how you know that it's fitted correctly and not too small. All right, now this is the saddle. This saddle is a little different than the Comfy Fit. It doesn't have a tree. It does have pretty good padding. It's more like a gig saddle. Um, but it's kind of interesting. It's not, it's not made the same as my other gig saddle is. So I really like it. It's got this padding here, and then I had a back pad too. I really highly suggest having the back pad because it does add width. And width will be nice when we're kind of bumping around on the rough ground and possibly bombing through creeks and going up trails when we when he starts driving and we're in the hyperbike. Um, I think that'll be real nice to have that extra. And I might even at that point get a longer pad that comes all the way down to here. I'll probably do that. Um, so this one, all the strapping is hurricane blue, except for I had the traces done in neon green and then the um, piping on the collar is neon green. And then you'll see the reins are neon green. So I really like blue for Zorro because of his blue eyes. I just think it looks nice. This harness is nice. It's got this, um, it's like a patent leather kind of, the hip for the hip straps. It's nice to kind of pad those, those um, rings. And then the breeching is made out of that same stuff. So it's really soft. Um, if we're doing a lot of steep hills and stuff, I'll probably add a breeching pad. Uh, just to give it a little bit more width for going down some steep stuff so it's not going to cut into them at all. But this this stuff is so soft and so pliable. It's just a really interesting material. It'll be fun to see how it holds up. Um, I left the hip rings on. These are typically on workhorse harnesses and it's because draft horses are big, big 
And when you are working on the ground harrowing or disking or something with the horses, then the lines can loop down and possibly get hung up in your machinery. The horses can step a leg over or whatnot. So they have these hip rings to run the lines through and that way when you're walking behind them, the lines stay tidy up on their back. I find with the minis, they, they cause kind of a strange um, line from the bit. You'll have the bit through the ring, through the back ring, through the hip strap. And if you're sitting up here, then your lines kind of come up. And I don't really like that. So I run my reins through the neck ring, the, the turrets on the saddle, and then they just come straight up to my hands. That way, wherever I'm sitting behind the horse, I don't have my lines kind of bound up by these rings. I left them on just for the video, but I will be taking them off when I drive. So that's all my opinion again. But so here's the saddle and the bridging. Keep in mind, this is Zorro's second time wearing a harness. <laughs> He's such a good boy. So um, I wouldn't want the saddle to sit up here on his withers. I'd want it to sit back here. His girth groove, he's got a bit of a round belly. He's just got more of a roundness to his um, rib cage, and he's got he's a little fat right now. We haven't really been doing anything. We're going to start hiking this week, or next week. Um, so you'll do up the girth, and you'll see that girth groove is going to kind of pull that saddle a little bit. That's okay. I don't really want to fight that because I can't, there's no way to hold it back here. It's going to slide forward and be behind his shoulder there. So I'm just going to go with the flow with that. All right, so the saddle's adjusted where it needs to be for the girth groove. So it's a little further forward than I'd like, but it's fine. Um, but now my back strap is a little long, so it makes my crouper kind of be too long. It's just going to be flappy. We don't want this to be too loose. You don't want it to be tight so it's cranking on the tail, but you don't want it too loose or it will rub up and down and rub a, a sore under their tail. So we'll adjust it shorter. So I'm going to shorten it this direction is how you shorten it. So pull that. We'll try that next hole. Do the crouper. Sorry, bud. Good boy. On the second hole. Let's see how that works. That's pretty good. It's not too tight. There's some give to it, but it's not going to bounce up and down either. Um, I would like the hip straps to be forward a little bit more. I'll adjust this up to the shortest hole and then put the crouper on the longest. We'll see if that helps. I don't know. So undo your crouper before you adjust your back band so you're not giving them a big old snuggie. Adjust this a little bit shorter. That definitely pick that up more. And then we'll put the crouper on the biggest holes. Make sure your crouper is buckled on the same hole on each side or you can make them sore under their tail too. Especially donkeys. For some reason, I've had several people contact me and say their donkey has owies under their tail. And I'll ask, do you have your crouper buckled on the same hole on each side? And every time they don't, one side's higher than the other. And it just pulls and rubs underneath there. I, I don't know exactly why. It looks like it shouldn't do that, but it does. And donkeys just seem to have really sensitive skin. So make sure you do that. Uh, make sure that's even. So if you want to come to the side, Okay, so this will be fine. It's still going to keep his britching where it needs to be. The ring is right where I like it at the flank, at the swirl in the flank. Um, this is in the, it's at the widest part of his butt. So I like where it's sitting. If it's too low down here, I've seen it on, especially on steep hills, just sweep their feet out. If it's high up here, it'll inch, inch, inch up and get under their tail, which they don't really love. So I like to have it in the fattest part of the butt. The saddle is in good spot right here. Um, it's pulling a little bit from the back band, but you see the back band is still loose. It's not tight. It looks tight because it comes straight down, straight off, but it's loose. You do not want this any looser than this. You don't want it to actually lay on their back and be so loose that it runs the whole harness up and down like that. That's not going to be good. So. Um, what I'm not sure about and we're still finding out is if this needs a neck connector strap to, to back to the water hook. We'll find out and then I'll let you guys know um, if that's something that we're going to add. We are going to add a martingale strap down to the um, 
girth to help hold the front of that collar in place. So that is something, a false martingale that we're gonna add on there. Um, now we'll do the bridle. Here's the little Marathon bridle. It's a little different than the Comfy Fit. It doesn't have the molded crown piece, but this is such soft material that I don't think that's gonna matter. It is super lightweight. This thing hardly weighs anything. It doesn't bother Zorro at all, and he's never had a bridle on. I'm not sure how he's gonna do with blinders. We'll do a little tr training that way, but I do like to start him in the open bridle. I like them to do all groundwork, pull the travel and their first time in the cart to be an open bridle. Then I can switch them to blinders. I think all horses need to be able to go both ways because you never know if the next person will want to use blinders. Zorro's going to be with me forever, but um, I'll drive him either blinders or not, whatever he's most comfortable with. He does like to look around and he's not very spooky. He's pretty confident. So my plan right now is open bridle. So I'll get some cheek pieces for him. But I really like this little lightweight bridle. It's just a nice, fun little thing. And then the reins you see are neon green. They come with a clip. Um, I don't like a, a metal clip on a metal ring on a metal bit because it just really zings them in the mouth. It can run up and cause troubles in the, in the pole and the TMJ. So I never recommend clips on the bit for that reason and also because sometimes they'll turn to grab at a bug or a fly on their side and I've seen that bit clip hook on the harness and then their head is stuck and I, I've seen some pretty bad wrecks that way. So I just prefer to buckle it straight to the bit, to the ring. This bit is called a bare naked bit. It's a piece of biothane. It lays flat on their tongue. Um, he's just worked in it a couple times. I thought it would be a nice beginning bit for him before I put metal in his mouth just to get him used to having something in his mouth. He's pretty mouthy, so he doesn't really mind something in his mouth, but um, I just thought it was kind of an interesting segue into metal and maybe if he does well in it he'll just stay in it I don't know we'll see how it goes but we'll put the bridle on him you can see I have him tied up with his collar so his face is all ready for the bridle <laughs> good boy then you buckle it under the chin. This, this specific bit, you do buckle it under the chin. You don't have to do it very tight. Well, you do if you don't have it on a bridle. You'll see the, if you look it up on the website, they ride them, it's like a warrior bit, and they ride them with no head stall. That's why it's called bare naked. Um, obviously, we're gonna have a head stall. So it's a kind of a cool idea though for riding horses and to be dramatic. So the nose band, Two fingers below the point of this bone, this facial bone here, two fingers below, or one finger, but not lower and not, not higher. I like it pretty loose. I can fit a finger under there, even in the front. I drive with it loose. It, it's basically to help hold the blinders in place and stuff is what the nose band is for. Um, lots of people think the nose band is to keep their mouth shut, but that's just simply not so. Um, so anyway, that's why I like to do it that way. The throat latch, I like to have two or three fingers so they can bend at the pole. Um, let's see if it can go up one. No, that makes it a little bit snugger than I like, so I'll leave it down on this one. So this little bridle comes with side checks and also it comes with an over check. Um, the over check comes, hooks through the top of the bridle, goes down across the face, makes an X, and then goes to the bit. And um, and then you hook it to the water hook on the saddle to keep their, well, in the old days it was to keep their head up. I don't drive in any check rein. I don't feel it's safe. Um, with the driving I'm doing, my horses need to be able to put their head down, use their body, use their shoulders, use their back, use their butt. And check reins will often keep their head kind of high and they have to hollow in the back, which it makes them very sore. And it makes them use their shoulders funny. So I don't use any check rein at um, all. When, this is the Marathon fitted correctly to this little guy. So the bridle, the collar, the saddle, the britching, and the crouper. So I hope you like this little harness. I sure love it. And I know it won't be my last marathon. I think I'm gonna get one for Sky 2 in some different colors, purple for sure. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment or shoot me an email. Thanks so much.